Martini Pass is the second last of the seven passes when driving from the west. To find this pass from the N2, turn left two kilometers after Sedgefield and take the tarred Barrington Pass to the small settlement of the same name. The better option is to drive the entire 75 km 7 passes road and dedicate two hours. From Barrington, head east for a short distance on the gravel road that will take you to the western portal of the pass. Lush green forests, sliced open by deep gorges with a towering mountain backdrop, present a beautiful vista. The road starts descending into the 5 km long pass and almost immediately one is plunged into the shade of the forest canopy. The Homtini River is a great place to take a dip in the hot summer months and offers some wonderful rock pools. Master pass builder Thomas Bain was responsible for building this complex pass. This was his second pass of the route as he had commenced work from the Neisner end. Bain did a magnificent job considering the rudimentary tools at his disposal and this road, other than the bridge, has remained unaltered for almost 150 years. The first part of the descent offers extensive views over the forest-clad valleys far below. Like all the gravel passes in this high rainfall region, it is subject to flood damage, corrugations and potholes. Keep a lookout for pedestrians, cyclists, small antelope and of course baboons. On the western descent there is one extremely sharp and notorious hairpin bend with a recommended speed of just 20 km per hour. After the hairpin, almost the entire road becomes enveloped in the forest canopy as the road descends continuously towards the Homtini River. This pass is also sometimes incorrectly called the Khokama River Pass. The Homtini River forms a confluence with the Khokama River a few kilometers further downstream. This pass, like all the passes on the Seven Passes Road, is a national monument. The application of graffiti or in any way defacing a national monument constitutes a criminal offense. Going back in history, Thomas Bain was assisted by Charles Osborne with the construction of this pass. It was also the final pass needed to complete the 75 km long route between George and Neisner and it was finally commissioned in 1882. The slow and winding road served as the main route between the two towns for 70 years before the N2 was built along the coast in 1952. Once the coastal N2 route was opened, the Seven Passes Road saw a substantial decrease in traffic volumes. Well-known travel writer Thomas Bulpin penned the following words about this pass. A classic piece of old-time road making with dramatic views and the indefinable elegance of its curves. The river itself is a gorgeous torrent of amber water tumbling down from the forests on the steep mountain slopes to the north. The ascent on the eastern side of the gorge can often be a bit rough with washaways and deep corrugations, especially on the inner radius of the many sharp corners. About one kilometer east of Rennendal, there's a turn off to the left, which takes you to the old Millwood gold mines, as well as providing access to the beautiful Jubilee Creek picnic area. If you've traveled the Seven Passes Road from the west, there remains only one more pass to complete, which is the Thomas Bain built Phantom Pass just west of Neisner. Near the eastern summit, the pass ends near the settlement of Rennendal, which is well known for producing high quality hardwood furniture. Slow right down as you head through Rennendal, as it is a high pedestrian area. From Rennendal onwards, the road is tarred all the way to Neisner, with the exception if you take the turn off to the Phantom Pass, which is of course also a gravel road. From Rennendal, the road meanders through beautiful farms and small holdings for a further 9 kilometers before the turn off to the Phantom Pass is reached. <laughs> 